So, Alhamdulillah, as I was saying at the beginning, that if we are given an opportunity sometimes to send an email and we don't get a reply, you don't get agitated. If it's very important, you ask another scholar in your midst. You go to the masjid, go around and say, look, I really need to know what to do. It's very urgent. And sometimes you may get a response and Alhamdulillah, but do not be irritated with scholars when they have not replied because sometimes you don't know the circumstances surrounding their day, the day, you know. So for me, there might be people right now swearing me on email saying, you know, you're very arrogant, you don't reply, you don't even acknowledge. But I'm busy sitting with important people here. To me, there are VIPs sitting in front of me and it would be wrong for me to actually fiddle with my phone. Last night, I was sitting and fiddling with my phone in the presence of one, two people and I told them, this is not the right thing to be doing, but there is something that has just happened now which I'm dealing with. So, brothers and sisters, the same applies to Facebook. Like I was saying, the last time I think I explained to you how we came about uh, using that particular page that is on Facebook today, it was not my idea, not at all. It was the idea of someone who, who did it with a different reason altogether. And we, it happened that we managed to get it off this person and we learned how to use it and we will only use it for a good message. The other day I, I sent a tweet with a big laugh in it. And some people got excited about it saying, hey, you're a scholar of Islam, you're not supposed to be laughing. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed that. Some people got excited. They said, you're a scholar of Islam, you're not, you must strip yourself of the title if you want to laugh out loud. I mean, what's wrong? Are we not human beings, we're not allowed to laugh? What is it? So this is something foolish. In fact, it shows how small-minded people are. And I think if someone who was a scholar pretended like he was not a human being, he, he's a fool himself. Because wallahi, we are human beings. And this is why I hate it when people want to respect you to the degree of worship. Oh, I cannot tolerate that. Believe me, you know, they want to make a big deal out of the person you are. No, we are ordinary human beings. And whilst we do not like being worshipped, and wallahi, it's a fact. You know, if you were, this is why today when we greet, you just greet with the hand and that's it. No hugging and so on. No, no, no. Relax. Greet with the hand. And I was actually saying, if you would like to take photographs, it's not going to be possible. So many people are taking a photo. There is a, there is a big uh, poster out there. We've kept it life-size, you know. So you can stand next to it, take a picture. Say, I was there. You know? I was there. So... Uh, we ask Allah to grant us easy. We need to know it's not easy. You know, I was in Sri Lanka a few days ago, three, four days ago, and thousands of people, who do you please? What do you do? How many do you greet? How long? You know, every time I would go to a masjid, uh, in, uh, when I was leading salah in Cape Town, uh, you would take 45 minutes to come out. So why must I be sentenced to a 45-minute term uh, when everyone else has gone out and they've gone home and I come out to the car park and I see my only car is there, that's it. <laughs> I think to myself, even the sheikh with the key has gone home to have a quick bite to come back after a while to lock up because he knows the sheikh is going to be too long. So it's not fair on a scholar. You need to be considerate. And uh, with different people are different. Some scholars might come to you, they can give you a lecture morning, afternoon, evening and night. Four lectures a day, excellent. Some have a weak immune system. Some are not that, you know, uh, should I say, uh, they require rest. They might not be that healthy and so on. A person like me, there are two, three things you need to remember. The shorter the visit, the more likely for it to happen. The longer you request. I've got emails, thousands of emails where they say, we'd like you to come here for one week. We'd like you to come here for two weeks. If I had to respond to that, I wouldn't even be able to live, to be honest. But someone says, we have one talk we'd like you to come for. Not a problem. We, we may be able to squeeze it into the itinerary. Another thing for me personally, offer me food and I will re really reluctantly come through. When I say that, I mean if it's the normal meal you're having and you perhaps have to, I'm a last minute man. I'll tell you in the morning, I'll come to your place this evening perhaps, you know. It's a last minute thing. That's the type of person I am because if, if you let someone know in advance, it becomes too big and then you become a person who's, you know, 
more of a celebrity. No, no, no. The message is important when it comes to persons of deen and Islam. Not to meet the person. That's not important. The message is important. If you think it's more important to meet someone than the message itself, you've lost the plot. Believe me. Lost the plot totally. Because the, what is the point of meeting and saying all oh, this and yet your life hasn't changed. Nothing has even inched forth in your heart this way or that way. That's a waste of time. So we need to make sure that we change. We need to make sure we've learned. This is why Muhammad wasallam, if meeting him was important, he would have been given eternal life. If meeting him was important, he would be in our midst today. But following his message is even better than having met him. Better than that. You have Sahaba radiallahu anhum, mashallah, they were chosen, they have a rank. But we will meet him in the Akhirah by the will of Allah. He will recognize us by the mere fact that we used to follow what he taught. So remember this, it's not possible sometimes, even when it comes to scholars. We, like I was saying, if you invite me for food, to me food is not important. You know, this morning I was feeling a little bit, uh, I don't know what the right word is, maybe perhaps full. And one of the reasons is the word that I learned here called makan. <laughs> Makan, makan, makan. Wherever you go, makan. I used to think makan means a place. It doesn't mean a place. <laughs> it means you need place for food. Allahu Akbar. Food. Everything is food. You go here, food. You go here, sandwiches. You go there, biscuits. You go there, tea. You go here, something else. Allahu Akbar. Ya Akhi. Allah. I, you know, we're not used to this type of hospitality which takes you to hospital. 